Hello everybody, it's me, Ashitos Nicolitos, and thank you so much for clicking on my video. So today I want to walk y'all through the top four things that I wish I knew before I started my MCAT preparation. And this is something that I want um, MCAT students to look at before you actually start studying for the MCAT and planning a time to take the MCAT. But I also want you to look at this video if you hit a wall during your MCAT practice. Um, a lot of people don't share a lot of information about this, but it happens to most of us, the majority of us, probably something like 90% of us MCAT preppers. So what happens is, you think that your MCAT progress is going to go like this, maybe a little bit like this, but no, it goes kind of like this a lot of times, right? And you got to be prepared for that. So what I think is the most important thing to prioritize before you start and whenever you hit a roadblock is, one, your motivation, two, your health and wellness, three, your organization, and four, your sense of self-awareness. I'm going to go, this is in no particular order, not any one of these elements is more important than the other one, so I'm just going to talk to them as they come to mind. It's important to study your content, it's important to study um, test strategies and really get into the minds of the MCAT writers like I'm always talking about, but you also need to make sure that you are keeping these elements of your life in check. You will hit that brick wall that is the MCAT and you will struggle to recover from it. Am I speaking from experience? Did I hit a brick wall during my MCAT that I almost didn't get over? Yes, I did. It's called burnout. So the first aspect of your MCAT prep that I want you to prioritize is going to be your health and your wellness. Your health and wellness are of the utmost importance when you are studying for the MCAT. We're not talking about content review, we're not talking about test strategies. Those are important as well, but they're not as important as how you are doing mentally, emotionally, and physically while you study for the MCAT. If you're not sleeping enough, if you're not eating what you're supposed to be eating, if you're eating McDonald's every day, if you are cutting off your friends and you're only talking to your MCAT books and talking back to these Khan Academy videos, Homie, I don't know how you expect to get your dream score because I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. But basically, I've written a whole blog series on the importance of taking care of each one of the aspects of your health that will make a big difference come your testing. And everybody will tell you that preventing burnout is always going to be so much easier than recovering from it. In my experience, it took me about a month and a half to get back to myself and back to the test scores that I was getting originally. So you don't wanna, you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna be studying for your MCAT doing good and then all of a sudden your scores tank for a month before they start to pick up again. So just, just take this one from me. Just understand that you wanna be prioritizing your mental, your emotional, and your social health while you're prepping for this exam. And keeping your life balanced in that way is a way of preventing burnout. And make sure that you are good because if you are not good, your score will not be good. And that brings me to the second thing that I would like to talk to you about, and that is self-awareness. Um, you're gonna learn a lot about yourself when you're studying for the MCAT because for the first time, this is an exam. It's not like exams you've taken in Gen Chem, Physics, or Go Biochem, right? The MCAT is a gatekeeper when it comes to a medical school acceptance. But I say all of that to really just hit the point that this is like no exam that you've ever really studied for. So you're going to be learning a lot about yourself because you need to know how you learn best. Whether that's visual, whether that's through tactile learning, whether that's auditory, whether you learn things by reading, right? You need, to, you need to really try out different things and see which ways that the content is sticking the best. And I learned um, earlier on, luckily I learned earlier on that I'm better for, with visual learning. I like videos, I like modules, I like to be able to see pictures and be able to draw out pictures. I'm a visual learner. Right, so that is something that you're going to want to definitely try different things out to hone in on your best learning style, right? Because the MCAT is not a one-size-fits-all type of exam. We know that already, but, but you really need to take that idea and apply it to your studies. In order to know whether or not you've 
reached your limit and whether or not you're dangerously ordering that line between you can handle it and you can't handle it anymore. You need to know yourself. You need to know how you learn. You need to know how much you can learn comfortably in a given hour, day, month, whatever that may be. Because if you don't know your limits, you may be pushed by what you read online, by what people tell you, by your group study sessions. You may be pushed into that uncomfortable territory of, oops, you've gone too far. And you've gone too far for too long and now you're burnt out. Do we want to be burned out when we're studying for the MCAT and lose maybe a valuable month, two months of studying because we just, our mind just isn't where it's supposed to be? Do we want that? No, we don't want that. So we're going to avoid burnout at all costs and that's why you need to be aware of yourself. The better you know yourself going into your MCAT prep, the better prepared you will be to really address what is going on and how you can fix it when things get rough. Organization is also a major key in your MCAT preparation and you need something. Whether you are a Google Calendar, um, a Google Docs, Excel sheet, paper planner, reminder on your phone type of person, it doesn't matter, but you need something, right? Because you need to get yourself into an MCAT schedule, right? And what really helped for me was I actually created a Google Doc sheet and I had every day and every day of the week I had to the hour what I was going to be doing from 8 to 9, 9 to 10, 10 to 11, 11 to 12. I even incorporated my meal breaks and my um, yoga, my workout, um, my shower times into there. But that was something that really held me accountable and really made it easy for me to go about my everyday activities without having to put too much thought into it, right? It was a little bit robotic. It tends to be like that, but that was a way that I could feel comfortable crossing out things that I've, get done, that I've gotten done during the day, even if it was just taking a shower. That was a major accomplishment for me during my MCAT prep. So, so establish a system that really works for you. And I also used an Excel sheet to keep track of the different MCAT sections that I was studying and how I was making progress in that way. And I can share those um, templates that I used if you just message me or drop or slide into my DMs on Instagram. I'm here to help y'all, really. Um, but yeah, you need to stay organized because there will get you will get to points in your MCAT studying where you're not going to want to study. You're going to wake up in the morning and you're not going to even know when, where to start, when to start. And if you set that maybe the week before you plan out every day, every hour, um, you don't even have to think about it. You wake up and you know what you have to do. You know what has to be done. And at the end of the day, you take a look at what you've done versus what you didn't do. And you can readjust your schedule from the week going forward. But this is something that, especially if you're able to cross it out, that's something that I love to do. Um, it also holds you accountable when you see things that aren't crossed out and you realize quickly um, what you can reasonably do in the day versus what's too ambitious and what isn't pushing you hard enough. So the last thing that I want to talk to you about is motivation. And one of the most difficult things that I run into when I'm tutoring students um, who are planning to sit for the MCAT is motivation, right? You need to find that motivation for yourself, but you also need to have your little reservoirs of motivation that you can tap into when you just can't take it out of your soul. Like you just can't find that motivation within you, right? And it happens, it happens. It's happened to me before, especially when I got burned out. I'm gonna keep talking about getting burned out because this is something that nobody warns me about. When I hit a wall in my MCAT studies and I kept studying and studying and my scores kept going lower and lower, I had to tap into my what I call my reservoirs of motivation because it wasn't going to come from me. I was at a point where I was sitting here hysterically crying over my computer. My, my poor boyfriend, I was calling him after every practice test saying like, yo, I don't see the point anymore because I am not getting the scores that I am working for. I'm not getting the scores that I deserve. I'm putting in hundreds of hours in this MCAT prep and it's just not working for me, right? A, you have to listen to yourself and listen to what I've been saying throughout this video. Take care of your health and really look there first. If you're taking the MCAT, the, what is the goal? Y'all tell me. Just kidding, I'm gonna tell y'all because it's not an actual conversation. But the goal is medical school. The goal is to become a physician. The goal is to save somebody's life one day, right? And the MCAT, although it doesn't seem very connected, um, 
you have to see it that you want to learn this material, you want to do well on this test, you want to get into medical school so that you can become a physician. But what I did was I kept a few things in my pocket for when things got especially rough and I couldn't see that angle. I listened to a podcast called The Pre-Med Years by Dr. Gray and if you're not listening to it, I suggest that you listen to it because what Dr. Gray does is he interviews a lot of different non-traditional students and traditional students who have struggled and he interviews them and he shows that you're not alone in this struggle. So just listening to these people as they talked about how they never thought they'd make it to medical school and then they finally did, this was something that was able to really ignite that flame in me once again to be like, oh, I'm gonna get there one day, so let me go study. My point is that you need to find that little something that's gonna light a fire under your butt when you can't find it in yourself, that reason that's so far ahead of you for why you're studying for the MCAT and the point of studying for the MCAT. Whether that's uh, your favorite medical drama TV show for the moment, whether that is um, the listening to stories of people who've made it through podcasts like Dr. Gray's pre-med podcast, or whether that is actually just watching match videos from different medical schools that you're dreaming about and just seeing the reactions on people's faces when they finally find out what specialty they're matching into. Envisioning yourself in those positions and manifesting that but knowing that you can manifest all you want, but if you don't put in the work, if you don't hit those MCAT books, how are you gonna really get there? So there we have it. These are arguably the most important aspects of your MCAT journey, right? Content is important, test strategies are crucial, right? But nothing is gonna be as crucial as your health and well-being, your organization, your motivation, and your sense of self-awareness. So I hope that you take away these nuggets of wisdom. If this helped you, I am so glad. Don't be a stranger. Listen, nobody actually messages me for some reason. I mean, that's cool too. But drop a comment down below. I love chatting with people. DM me on Instagram. Hit me up on my website. Check out my blog post on the importance of health and well-being to the MCAT. What I did and what I wish I did. Because I'm dropping nuggets of wisdom so that you don't have to learn lessons the hard way like I did. I'm always happy to help. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up or subscribe down below. And I will appreciate you forever. Anyways, it's me, Ashitos Nicolitos, and thank you for spending some time with me today. I'll see you next time.